Hey YouTube, it's Jay. Uh, continuing on our journey, uh, still dealing with the problems with my hands. In fact, my thumb has actually collapsed even further in on my left hand, so I'm gonna have to get that done. It's not next, but it'll be the one after next. Um, so far it's not interfering with my bridge, but it's very, very close. So I'm going to have to deal with that. In the, in the meantime, uh, I needed to get a good collapsible bridge to put into my case. Uh, and so I've got three of them that I have. So I've got three of them that we're going to compare with each other today. We have one from Collapsar. We have one from uh, First Disc, and we have one called uh, QREST, I think. I'll verify that in just a minute. Uh, we're going to look at all three of them up against each other and see which one goes in my bag. All right, this is the Collapsar bridge. Uh, this one was $24.77 on Amazon. I will link to these down below so you can, if you want one of them, you can pick which one you like and we'll uh, take a look. So the Collapsar bridge comes with, oh, by the way, we're also going to show you, uh, from my experience, the best ways to use a bridge uh, in this video. Uh, so the Collapsar bridge, it's got a uh, handle. These are all expandable bridges, so they all stretch out. Uh, and as somebody who's 5'6", uh, on a nine-foot table, there are a lot of shots that I just can't reach. And so having a good bridge is very important to me. Uh, so this one comes with a moose head, uh, which is what I will use. It also comes with a um, kind of an old-school brass head. And so the brass head screws on. This has, a, has threading on the end of it. Um, where the moose head just pushes on. Uh, there's kind of like a gasket around the moose head and then it pushes on. When you, when you push that on, you got to make sure it goes all the way on and snaps into the little groove. Otherwise, it'll just keep falling off and wiggling. We don't want a bridge head that's going to wiggle, right? So I will use the moose head uh, I do like, this is pretty firm, so you can extend it to different lengths and it stays, stays solid. I like that. Um, if you decide to use a metal bridge head on, your, on it, always check the grooves when you first get it and make sure that there's not a mold mark in the middle of them. Um, so on my, on my regular bridge, this style head, a lot of times there will be a little um, edge in here and you don't want that rubbing on your shaft. So always check with a metal head to make sure there's no edge there. Uh, and if there is, get out a Dremel or something and smooth it out. You don't want nicks in your shaft coming from the bridge head. <clears throat> okay, so this is the collapsar. It is, uh, $24.77 is the price on that. This one is from a company called First Disc. Uh, it's got kind of a golf grip on it. It comes with a plastic uh, <coughs> traditional bridge. It also comes with a chalk holder. Now, I don't like these chalk holders. I see people use them. I, I, I think they're kind of ridiculous. If you're gonna put a, put a piece of chalk if you're gonna use a piece of chalk, just stick it in your pocket, right? There's no reason not to. So the chalk, chalk holder has no value to me. Um, this one is the least expensive. It was $22.62. Um, I can tell you something I don't like right now. I don't like that that is that loose. Quite often, I will want a bridge only part way open. I don't want it all the way open. Now, when it is all the way open, it's stiff. It's actually really stiff, but I don't like that when it's partially open, this is just loose. 
Um, so that's a, a big minus for me. That's that's a to me that's a cheap manufacturing thing. Uh, the bridge head screws on. God, this feels cheap. It it just feels cheap. Um, I mean, it'll work, but it feels cheap. Yeah. And that goes with that. Now, this is the third one. This is called. This is from a company. I guess it's called Q Bridge. Uh, this was the most expensive at twenty six twenty four. I'll tell you something I like right off the bat. This one has a swiveling head. Now, that's not important for the shot. You're always going to shoot it with it in its center position. But when you're packing it in your case, that means you don't have to take the bridge head off to have it lay flat inside the case. That's, that's a good thing to me. Um, now this one has a metal nut on the end of it, uh, and it comes with a moose head bridge. So you've got a metal nut here. It's got a little rubber gasket inside it that fits in into the end. This one might be a little more challenging to get in place. got a little wheel here and you probably can't see it but there's a little wheel here that you hold that lets you position the bridge head and then you turn the wheel to fix it in position you hold the wheel while you spin it down almost all the way and then you use the wheel so that you can set it in position exactly where you want it Okay, definitely a tight extension. It's not like this one that's loose. Considerably shorter than the other two. Um, that's a problem for me that it's that much shorter. Uh, I like that end better, but the fact that it's so much shorter, let's go back to that shot we, we just had a second ago. If I have this shot, where the cue ball's all the way down near the end, I can't reach that. You see that? I can't reach it because the bridge is too short. That's too bad because I really like this bridge. And I like that it's it's easy to pack away uh, in my case, but this being this short is a non-starter for me. I can't reach the sh I can't reach the shots that I would need a bridge for. So process of elimination: the Q bridge at twenty six dollars and twenty four cents. You can see the head folds flat. That's a non-starter for me. Out of these other two, out of the Collapsar and the um, first disc bridge, I like that this screws on, but, uh, and I don't like that with the Collapsar bridge, the threads stick out past the, past the moose head. Uh, and, and the reason for that is when you're behind the ball, like if I'm here getting ready to shoot, let's just say this is up a little bit so I'm not making it quite as difficult on myself. If I'm here and I'm setting up for this shot, I can't see that tip and I hit the ball with the bridge while I'm still half an inch away from it. So there's, it's very, very hard to judge that sticking out. So I don't like that there are threads on the end of that that, that stick out. So here, you see how it sticks out. And so I, I can 
foul very easily because you can't judge how close you can put the bridge to the ball. Now, I know you're not going to put the bridge right on the ball in many cases, but what if you're shooting over a ball, right? What if I've got something like this, I have to shoot over the ball with the bridge. Now, I'm in this weird place where I'm trying to set my bridge up to get over that. Let's just pull that a little further away. Now I'm here and I'm trying to set up to shoot over it. Oh, I just moved the ball. See that? I can't even see how far away that bridge can be. So I don't like that it sticks out over the edge. I think that the difference for me between these two bridges, I think the part that's the make or break for me is that this one, the, the um, first disc, I just don't like that it's so loose. Um, so this one will not go in my case. It's probably a better one if, it, if I just wanted to have a collapsible around the house. But the fact that this slides like this, that, that is a game changer for me. So the one that's going to go into my case is the Collapsar Bridge. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to end up doing to it is I'm going to end up getting a Hacksaw or a Dremel and I'm going to cut those threads off so that it's, it's flush with the Moosehead Bridge. And I'm just going to take this and toss it. Uh, because I, I feel like this is a better bridge to use. Uh, it was the middle in pricing, again, $24.77 for this Collapse Our Bridge. These other two, I think, um, kind of non-starters for me. And again, the Collapse Our does have the brass head. I could put the brass head on there and it will consume those threads, uh, but I'd rather have the moose head on my bridge. All right, so out of the three, clear winner for me is Collapsar, but I'm going to have to cut the threads off of it to make it so that it's flush with the, with the uh, moose head. All right, so Collapsar going in my bag. And if you remember, I wasn't a fan of the Collapsar uh, three-in-one or ten-in-one tip tool, um, but this is this is clearly a better bridge than the other two, in my opinion. So those those are my pros and cons. Collapsar is going in my case. Let's talk about how to use a bridge. So let's let's talk about how to actually use one. Um, and since we're doing the thing on the collapsar, I'm going to use the collapsar for most of this. By the way, there was another bridge that I had that was a uh, it was a three piece bridge um, that I really liked. Uh, I loaned it to Johnny Archer. It's still at his pool hall somewhere. I've never gotten it back, uh, but uh, that's because I never really asked for it back. Okay, so let's talk about how to use a bridge. Okay, here's a shot. I can't reach this. You can see my, my bridge would be all the way up by the point. So for something like this, I want to use the mechanical bridge. So how do you use a mechanical bridge? Well, Dr. Dave has a whole bunch of examples of different ways to do things on the bridge. I'm going to show you what works for me, what's always worked for me, and the only way that I will ever do this. Um, throw a couple more balls on the table just to make it a little more interesting. Okay, so first of all, the basic of using the bridge is you want the bridge to be on the table, okay? 
I see a lot of people that will hold the bridge like this with their left hand and try to do this. Okay? And I even see some pros do that. And most of them, it's the reason why they do that is because they're tall and they don't have to use a bridge that often. So they don't realize just how unstable this position is. You can see I'm moving the bridge head around pretty easily. Okay. It also doesn't lend itself to me getting straight down on the shot. The way to use the bridge, lay it flat on the table, get it where you want it. You may, you may put your cue in there to, to take a look at it to make sure you're in the right place. Pin it down with your hand. Hold the bridge in one place with your hand. You see that? I am pressing down on this and actually pushing the shaft to the table. That pins it down now. It's very hard for me to inadvertently move that bridge head. I can do it if I really try, but I don't need to. Uh, but it's, I, I have to actually work at it. Second, I see people that will hold their cue with a regular grip. Okay, trying to do it like it like it was a regular shot. Don't do that. Never do that. Never hold the cue like this. Always switch to a dark grip. Okay, you want a dark grip between your thumb and between between your thumb and your first two fingers. Curl your fingers down on and get a firm grip. Okay, next, when you're down on the shot, get all the way down on it, just like you normally would, and lift your elbow up. Okay, you want your arm parallel with the table. So when you're shooting this shot, you wanna get, let me change glasses. You want to get all the way down on the shot just like you normally would. Now, if you're really close to a rail or something and you think that the cue is going to bounce off the rail back towards the bridge, it's okay to push down and hold it to pinch it just so you can lift it. Remember, you, all you have to do is move it that far and the cue ball's not going to hit it, right? So, get it where you want it, pin it, Get your cue, line your shot up. You want to get level with the table. Elbow up so that your arm is parallel. And push straight through. Okay? Everybody got that. Now here's something I see a lot of players, especially beginning players, struggle with. What do you do when I need to be right here for this shot and there's a ball there okay this is when you see players hold it hold the cue holding the cue or the bridge up here's a here's a trick for you the bridge doesn't have to be straight you can have the bridge all the way out here and still get a good bridge Okay. Now let's talk about one other situation. And this comes up more in straight pool than it does anything else. When the bridge isn't tall enough. Now you know, of course, that if we're just shooting over a ball, if we're just shooting over a ball, we know that we can turn the bridge on its side. Uh, and by the way, if you haven't noticed on a moosehead bridge, one of these is deeper this side 
which is you almost always the right hand side is deeper cut than the left and that's so that you can get right up on a ball and get over the top right let me pull that back just so i can reach it because i actually can't reach this shot i'd have to choose something else but let's just say i'm like here okay Now I can get up over the top. Get my arm nice and parallel to the table. Nice straight stroke through it. Of course, I had to play a safety there. That was a bad cut to try for. But uh, you can see I can control it pretty easily. But what if you've got this cluster here, your cue ball's up on top of it, And now you're too close, even, even with the bridge up high, you're too close and you, you just can't get a good hit on that cue ball. What do we do then? Okay, so there are a lot of things you can do. Um, there are a lot of different ways to do this. Some bridge heads on these sides will have a square notch. In theory, that square notch is so that you can interlock the heads of two bridges. And you can do it with, without the square notch, but it's a lot more difficult with a rounded one. Uh, the idea is that you can put the two heads together. Never do this. Never, ever, 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 ever do that. The problem with it is it's just too unstable, even with the ones where the bridge head locks in. Okay, let me show you how to deal with this situation. Turn your first bridge, turn, turn the bottom bridge into a normal position. You want it at an angle, okay? Even if you can put it straight, you don't want it straight. You want it at a little bit of an angle. Now watch this neat trick. We take the second bridge head and we put it in one of the grooves, preferably the middle height groove. Now watch what happens to that bridge head as I push this forward. See it's starting to raise up, raise up, raise up. Raises up, raises up. Okay, we're a little bit off, so I'm gonna have to use the top. <clears throat> the top one. See that? We use the one bridge to elevate the second bridge. Now, the problem you're going to have is that this is inherently unstable. You can see how much that's moving. The way we fix that, Be nice if I could reach this a little easier, but the whole point is that it's a shot we can't reach. Be very careful not to touch your intervening balls with that bridge head. So if you're if you're a little too close, just pull your bottom bridge back, and now we've got clearance, right? Okay. So now, what I want to do? Remember, I said we want to secure the bridge as much as possible. Press down on it. Okay, now will this still wiggle up and down? Yeah, of course it will. It's, a, it's an inherently unstable bridge. See how unstable it is. And this is where it's good to have the collapsing one on the bottom because I can move it back further. Okay, now, I line up, I press down on the bottom bridge, or on the top bridge, and my pressing on the top bridge is holding the bottom bridge in place. You can see, even though the shaft is moving, this head won't move. And by the way, you can use the other side too, that works as well. But we get that lined up, we press down on this bridge, that allows us some stability. Now I don't like this because this, this collapse our head, 
isn't secured. So in this case, I might actually choose to go this way with it. Just because that, just because this bridge has a little bit on the um, movable side. But again, I'm holding the top bridge, which is is securing the bottom bridge. Now you can see that that top bridge is wiggling a lot because we're a collapsible bridge. But I can at least get my hit, right? So if you're going to use two bridges, do it like this. Use one bridge to support the other. And by the way, you can do it on its side too. It does work if you need a little bit more height. You can see how far up off the table I'm getting that bridge. Now there are some other ways of doing things. I've seen, and you'll see this in Dr. Dave's video, I have seen people do this and set the bridge there. In a real tournament, there are two problems with this. Number one, it's illegal. You can't do it. You have to have control of the bridge. Even if you could do it, it's a bad idea. And the reason is because it's very hard to get this bridge out of the way of the shot. Okay, so yeah, I could do this. So the problem with doing a bridge this way is that you have no control over the one that's on the table. Second, you notice that I'm hitting down on the ball, which is gonna make it curve, but how do you get this bridge out of the way? If the cue ball comes this way, that's foul. Don't do this, bad. I already talked about the problem with doing the interlocking bridge thing, which you can do, and you will see pros do this, but the problem with that is that is, that is inherent, inherently unstable. Um, so if you're going to hit with a bridge, and you have to use two of them to get over a cluster of balls, the most effective way is to use one bridge to elevate the other bridge. And by the way, you never want to push past where you would normally. So on a cue, you've got like the lacquered area and then you have the area that's either waxed or in my case, there's nothing there. Um, on your bridge, you never want to push it past that. So you never want to be balanced up on the handle like this. Okay, you always want to be up in that area. And if you need more height, pull the bottom bridge back Use a taller, use, use a taller groove in your moose head or, or even in a regular bridge, either one. That's how you use, so that is how you use a bridge the most effective way. Remember, always pin the bridge to the table. That's very important. If you don't anchor the bridge to the table, you run the risk of the motion of your shot causing you to push the bridge out of line. So always make sure you pin the bridge and when you've got more than one bridge, and by the way, you can do this with three or four bridges if you wanted to. We could do something like this. Okay. much more difficult to do three bridges because you have to pin both of the top two to get any kind of stability at all. Uh, but you can stack as many bridges like this as you want. Um, if I wanted to, I could add a, third, a fourth bridge. Now every bridge you add does get a little bit more unstable, but I could add a fourth bridge. You can see how unstable this is getting. Um, You can stack as many bridges as you want like that. So you can stack as many bridges as you want like that. Just remember, the more bridges you stack, 
the more unstable it gets. Two bridges, I've never needed a third. Okay, as short as I am, I'm playing straight pool where I've had, you know, the cue ball under the rack and maybe the next ball here where I've had to go over, over the top of the rack um, and had basically the rack like this and had to go over the top of the whole thing. I have never needed more than two bridges. I have had to turn it on the side to get that extra height. The key to this is remember, we need a stable bridge, so always press down and anchor your bridge on the table. And it's usually easier to do that if the bottom bridge is out of the way. So there you have it. That's how you use a mechanical bridge. And that's how you use multiple mechanical bridges when you have to bridge even higher. That's all there is to it. Hope you have a great day. We'll catch you next time.